Hey there everyone, it's Fiber34 here, and in this two-part video series, I'm going to show you tips, tricks, and strategies on how to speedrun Dark Souls as a sorcerer, which is my favorite class to speedrun as. I recommend you watch these videos here that, are show, that have links and annotations before you watch this. These are just general guide videos and are almost required viewing. Uh, generally, the sorcerer uses horribly overpowered magic and kills bosses really quickly compared to other speedruns that use melee weapons for the most part. I find it a lot of fun. I recommend you try it out, too. The Rare the Record Sorcerer Run, as of this video recording, is 1 hours 8 minutes, and here's a link to it. I recommend you watch that also before watching this. Learn the route. And on to the first trick. Alright, so the very first thing we need to do in a run is grab the Red Tearstone Ring. And here we are, having run, specifically, from Firelink Shrine after clearing the Asylum. I'm going to show you how to get past these drakes safely. I want to make sure you have full stamina running past this guy. Wait for him to actually start breathing, then just jump. Roll twice. Sometimes you get unlucky and he breathes fire your direction. He probably won't kill you, as you can see. And if that happens, just drink. Drink up. Otherwise, just keep running. Then this guy doesn't give you any trouble, really. Now this next drake, most of the time, no issue. Sometimes he'll clip you with the lightning. Just generally... Follow the route here, and you'll be able to dodge all of these drakes as well. Or you'll just clip lightning and also almost die. That's why I wear two pieces of armor, so that a direct hit from the lightning will not kill me. Sometimes the drakes will just randomly uh, shoot lightning at you and actually hit you while you're climbing ladder, and there's nothing you can do about it. But otherwise, you can get through here most of the time. I actually pick up the red tear stone ring at the top here, build up a bit of speed running around in circles, of course after healing and jump towards the door. You want to be generally, like, a few steps away from it. And then roll three times in the direction of the bridge. You can do it twice, usually, and sometimes be safe. Three times, though, is the better number of times to roll. So then just jump towards the door, roll three times towards the bridge. And then you run past this guy. And that's, that's how you obtain the right here, Stone Ring. Alright, the next trick I'm going to cover is how to get the moss that's necessary. Um, specifically, Red Tear Stone Ring, it activates when you're below 20% HP. So, when you're under 20%, you do 50% more damage. Problem is, getting into Quelag, there's a bunch of poison in the way. So, either you have to run around very slowly, wait out poison resistance on the other side of the uh, Light Town. We have to like, run to where um, the Butcher Lady spawns. However, we just do it much faster by getting ourselves a purple moss. You can go kill the trees if you want in the forest until one of them drops it. They have a half decent drop rate. And while you're running through there, uh, there's a chance for them to, you know, if you want to kill one or two of them. But otherwise, if you want the actual fastest way to grab a moss, I'll show you right here. As you fall down here, land here, land, walk left, and then shoot that guy once. I was a little close to him, so I actually missed him the first time. I should have been like a step bound or back. And I die in the video. Um, if you do that properly, you shouldn't actually die there. And you get the moss and keep going down. But that moss is key for fighting Quelag. Again, watch the actual Sorcerer 108 route um, if you want to know exactly what you need to be doing. This is just explaining tricks. Um, I also recommend, if also you're getting a little confused, to watch the Red Tearstone Ring set video that I have also. If you haven't already. point is that, you know, we, we activate the red tear stone ring, and then when it's active, once we're across the poison, we use it, uh, the moss, so we get unpoisoned. And so that we can fight Kilag without being poisoned, and still have the red tear stone ring on for massive damage. And here we are in Sens, the next trick in the run. It looks a little odd, normally, when, also, uh, I assume for the rest of the run, you're going to have the, uh, these two pieces of armor on, or three or four. You want the gold hem stuff at this point. Normally, you have to throw. Well, you just use the boulder to crash this wall open by pushing it this way. However, this is a magic wall, and this is a magic snake man. If you just anger the magic snake man, he'll attack you as any snake man would. However, he has the magic stab, wham, -bam, which is incredible. And then, you know, having done his one thing in life that is important, he kills himself. Uh, normally, that won't happen. Uh, so you'd actually just want to generally run over here and fight him, kill him. 
A very key point here. Talk to Logan, open the cage, then talk to him again. This is key. You must do all three of those things. Also, don't forget to grab the 10k souls that are here. You can do this without killing the snake, dude, but it's a little rough, so I just recommend killing him <laughs> if he doesn't suicide like that. I was real lucky that he did that. All right, next uh, trick in the sorcerer run is how to get past uh, this boulder right here. Um, normally, because this is not the first time I'm doing this on the save file, you just run up here. However, I don't know when the boulder is actually going to come, so I have to wait here until I actually see one. Normally, you just run up. Make sure you have the brightness at a good amount. Run up till about here. Turn backwards. Wait for it, and then just press the roll button, just the roll slash run button. Uh, without any directional input, and it gives you the back step. Here, also, these arrows are a great red tear stone setup, however, I messed up. Um, but yeah, just back step through that boulder. You get through just fine. Alright, next trick is how to get past these the bloody archer here. While you're running up, between arrows, cast homing soul mass. Cast, oh, it depends on how many things hit him, but usually two is enough to kill him. Just like that, basically. Should he not, you can just back up and he'll walk off. Some people find that's consistent. I find that just using two homing soul masses most of the time kills him a little faster. But uh, in that case, you know, the second one didn't kill him. All right, and then after Ornstein and Smo, next trick I want to explain is specifically what you have to do to quickly get the Lord Vessel. Normally you just talk to her, and she just gives you it. However, that's real slow. So what you want to do is, while you're about this far in the room, shoot her, run up to her, then run out. You have to actually run up to her. If you don't, the cutscene won't play. But simply doing that, running up to her, and then leaving will give you the Lord Vessel. That also gives us an added benefit later on of a Sentinel not being in the way, easy to get, easily being able to get the Crystal Halberd. Now, for those of you who actually are really good at Duke Skip, you really should practice the Duke Skip. Um, you won't need to do this part, but if you're bad at the Duke Skip, I recommend killing these pigs so that you can rest at the bonfire before the Duke Skip. So should you fail the Duke Skip, you have the bonfire that's right next to it. I'm just showing off like a pretty simple and easy way to kill them. Should they actually hit you at this point, if you have three pieces of armor on, um, they will not kill you, but bring you into red tier stone level, being perfectly under 20% HP at that point. One soul mass, one soul spear will kill them. It's quite comical. But yeah, normally you shouldn't be doing this. You should just do the Duke skip, or the Duke's archive skip, Duke archive elevator skip, Prison skip, whatever you want to call it. Duke skip is the general standard name. Um, but if you're still starting out speedrunning, just kill these two bastards. Like something like this. Um, preferably a little faster than I was doing here. And uh, then that lets you freely rest at this bonfire without any issues. So you can do the Duke skip to your heart's content. Yeah, but hopefully you don't do it at this part and you just go and try the Duke skip and get it the first try. Right, and just wanted to point out here, very specifically, sometimes you don't want to get bonfires just to save some time for, you know, and some bonfires you get, like, say, our safety bonfires. This bonfire specifically, after entering the Duke's Archive, you must rest here because you need to buy magic eventually from Master Logan. So, very key. Remember to rest here. Don't forget. You need to warp back here eventually. Now, assuming you killed Seath and warp back here by using a bone, probably, um, Master Logan won't actually be here if you did the Duke skip. So, the thing is, though, that uh, because I died at one point, he is. That's the thing. If you die at some point killing Seath, or don't do the Duke skip, or some other weird conditions, he'll just be there. However, if you do the Duke skip and don't die, he won't. So, I've been trying to test out what specifically makes him spawn, but the one way I know 100% to consistently make him spawn, if you do the Duke skip and do not die at any point going towards Seath and he's not there, is to run up to the prison section and enter it. That definitely makes him spawn. So I'm showing here the path towards that and just pointing it out. Like, should you do it perfectly and he's not there, go do this and he'll definitely be there. So just uh, run up these stairs. Not super <laughs> used to running up these stairs in this direction. Usually it's the other way around or not at all. run by these hollows. But yeah, again, stress. Look if he's there. If he's not, go do this. So 
actually need good spells as a sorcerer. These doors normally are closed if you did the Duke skip. Run in, open them, stand here, you're done. You can warp back. And he'll definitely be there now. Once he is there, if you've been spending your souls correctly, not having died, not having lost a lot of souls, and picked up some or picked up some extra souls, at this point in the run, if you should have around a hundred thousand. If you don't, you can go kill Pinmeal first if you want. Um, but uh, if you do smash all your souls and have ten thousand, then you can do this right away. You have to buy three spells from him, and the, assuming you bought Soul Spear earlier, before Anorlando. If you didn't, then you have to buy Spite. You know, soul spear at this point as well. The spells you want are crystal magic weapon, crystal soul spear, and homing crystal soul mass. Now that you have the best magic in the game, just kill the bastard with some delicious soul spears. Now we don't do that just for fun and humanity. We're doing that because he has, he has an awesome hat and an awesome catalyst. That catalyst has our castings of spells, but makes our spells significantly stronger. So if you do have the magic, if you do have 10,000 at that point, make sure to buy it right now. Otherwise, go kill Pinwheel or go kill other dudes. Uh, you can get Paladin Leroy to spawn before the uh, bed of chaos if you want. Really. Also make sure to get four attunement slots here. Um, it's not it's not super necessary, but if you're doing the super pro strats for Nito and um, four kings, then you want four attunement slots. If you're playing normally, you won't. Um, the order in which you do the next bosses, like the next three Lord Souls, is really up to you. If you feel like you're going to die, then do Bed of Chaos first, because at this point you'll have 30 humanity and you can do it. Um, or you can go try to kill Fire Sage instead. Of him. I would not recommend it, because Fire Sage is frankly mostly luck. If he does his AoE, you're basically dead if you try to Red Tear Stone Ring him. And if you don't try to Red Tear him, you're still basically dead, because that AoE is ridiculous. So I just usually take the shortcut. Just offer, you know, join her Covenant, offer her 30 humanity, and just let you go straight to Bed of Chaos. Otherwise, you know, do the other bosses first. Specifically, for right before Pinwheel, land on this platform. Wait till you can hear them rolling, then start going to go. If you go before they start rolling, they have a much higher chance of just rolling directly into you. They're a little slow to turn around. The uh, safe way to do Nito, uh, you know, Pinwheel, the absolute fastest way, is to, you know, before him, do that, and then just one. Soul Spear or Crystal Soul Spear. You know. If he spawns a Mimic thing in front of him, then that's why you cast two spells. So that one of them will hit it, and then the other will definitely hit, you know, a uh, pinwheel. You stand here, wait to see what mask he drops. Should he drop the Mask of the Child, use that for the rest of the run. Because it gives you more stamina regen, and that just means more sprinting. If it's not the Mask of the Child, just forget it. Mask of the Mother is also useful in, like, if you're doing a lava, the ceaseless skip, but we're not doing that, because that's crazy. Um, the next trick in the run is the getting the key to the seal easily. Hopefully you picked up the bow. Uh, when you're in Fort New Londa, you stand right here, not too far down, not too far up. Aim towards Ingward's head. I have a hard time doing this, because my second damn analog stick is hard to angle. But towards his head. I, like, come on, a little closer. Right there. Stop aiming. Equip your thing. Cast Soul Spear. Don't don't move. Don't change your aim. If you do that, hit him. One Soul Spear is all it takes to kill him. And there's your key. You don't have to run in through all those damn ghosts. And that's all the main tricks in the run. Here are my stats by the end of the Sorcerer run. You, of course, you know, you should definitely write down when in the 108, this World Record Sorcerer run, when he upgrades his stats. But generally, you want to get a bunch of intelligence. You want to definitely have at least 12 strength and 12 dexterity for Seath to use the you know the crystal halberd on, you know one more attunement slot when you need that, and the rest you just dump into endurance. Doing that just lets you, um, you know, run faster, run farther, and put on slightly better armor. And hopefully that uh, covered all of the major tricks, and maybe things that weren't perfectly clear 
in the world records, you know, sorcerer route that uh, you can glean yourself. And hopefully, this will help you to do your own speedruns. I recommend seriously watching the second part in this video series, specifically about red, to red tier stone ring setups, because that is a very, very important part of this route as well. When how to easily set up red tier stone uh, ring situations before bosses, and how to kill them easily as a sorcerer. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hope you um, watch the second one as well.